Well, praise the Lord. What an honor it is once again to be here, uh, to be, uh, praise God, amongst God's people, to be the least. I seem like everywhere I go, I find myself the least, but that's all right. I'll just stay right there. It's good to be humble about uh, knowing the Lord's able to help us. We're going to go to the book of Acts today, chapter 26. i read one verse in the very beginning, then I'll flip over in verse 19 and start again. When you get there, if you'd like to stand for the reading of God's Word, that'll be, be good. But we thank every one of you for coming today, and, and we hope that God will fill your basket up. Uh, you know, we've all went to pick blackberries before or pick strawberries or whatever it was, and, and uh, I'd, I'd like filling my basket up. I don't like coming back with a basket being half full or half empty, however you look at that, but I believe God will fill your basket up today if you'll let him. He's got something for you. He's wanting to help the church today. He's wanting to help the backslider. He's wanting to help the sinner. He's wanting to help the Christian that's getting weary, praise God, and be not weary in well-doing. I believe he's going to give somebody strength today. So thank you so much. I want you to know that I love you. Whether you still love me or not, I, I still love you. And I thank God for bringing us here. I thank him for what we feel. It's good to feel like I'm at home. I, you know, not everybody gets to have that feeling. And, and I'm thankful to, you know, after a long day to be able to go home. And it's good to, after a long week, to be able to come home. Amen. To be able to come and to worship with my brothers and sisters. And know that nobody's here to talk about nobody. Nobody's here to do nobody wrong. We're just here to love the Lord Jesus Christ and to lift him up. So you be much in prayer as we pray. I'm just going to read the first verse in 26, and then I'm going to turn over to, to uh, verse 19. So the Bible said in Acts chapter 26, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Now we know that in reading verse 25 and before that, that they're trying to find Paul guilty of something so they can and stop the gospel from coming out of his mouth. And he's already went, praise God, to, to Festus, and they're trying to send him to Agrippa, and, and they're, they're trying to lay in wait. The others are trying to lay in wait to kill him, and this looks like a bad time, but they're, really what they're trying to do is find him guilty of something. So they think if they keep taking, just like they did Jesus, if they try to take him to different places, somebody will find something wrong with him. So and when he's standing here before Agrippa, and said, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. Now I'm going to turn over my Bible to verse 19. And the Bible said, Where, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly visions, but showed first unto them of Damascus and of Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For this cause, these Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both to the small and to the great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and that should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, Thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most notable Phoebus, Festus. But speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of those things before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Help me pray one more time uh, that God be able to manifest himself. Father in heaven, Lord, we come to you in the name of Jesus. No other name given among heaven under men whereby we must be saved. And, and God, I pray that you'd move today and give us strength, Lord, to stand on thy word today. And God, I, I pray you give us words to say and move us out of the way uh, as quick as possible. Lord, uh, as quick as you can, Lord, would you move me out of the way that you'd be able to use me, God, for thy glory. I pray, God, that you'd be with every person that's here today. I don't know what's going on in their heart, God, but I pray that you'd stir up that good gift that's put inside of them. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to come together in one mind, in one accord, lifting up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I know that's the name that we must be saved by. And as we stand, God, we're going to depend upon you and give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. And I know that this is no new thought. I'm sure that maybe you've even heard this preached before, but I've never preached it. So we're going to go with it here and see 
seemed like uh, uh, maybe last night as I began to seek the Lord's face for what it had to, to bring today, he brought me back to the scriptures. I began to maybe flip through the Bible and right here is exactly where God brought me to. And I'd like to tell you, almost won't do, friend. Almost won't do. And I began to think, carnally speaking, maybe, uh, and I talked about this maybe a little bit before, but uh, there was a time when somebody thought, let's build a church right here. I'm glad they didn't just almost build a church, ain't you? I'm glad that somebody didn't just push that aside and say, well, let's don't build it there. I'm glad they really all together built a church right here. I'm glad, praise God, that somebody decided to put some windows in this church. I'm glad they didn't almost decide to do that because we can look out and see the glory of God and see exactly what he's done for. But there's many today, friend, that almost they think about coming. There's a lot of people today that maybe last week they thought almost I'll come to church. And this morning they lifted up their eyes in a devil's hell. I'd hate to almost get right there where I need to be and turn back from it. These men begin to look and say, well, the, uh, we've got prestige and we've got a kingdom and we're not going to give that up, Paul, but we like listening to you just a little bit. I'm glad, praise God, that a, a virgin didn't almost become, praise God, pregnant with a son. I'm glad that a lot of things in this Bible wasn't almost, but they were all together. That's why we can be here today and claim the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Almost, he said, you persuaded me. How many times have you been to church and almost you wanted to sing a song? Almost you thought maybe I can sing today. Almost I can testify today. I say not almost, friend, but all together, let's do it for the Lord and give Him all the praise. Almost you persuaded me, he said. How many times has God tried to get you to do something and almost you did it? I almost you did it. I thought about it just a little bit, but I thought about the consequences and there was too much fear involved with that. And I thought, maybe, Lord, I'll try it next time. I think one of the other ones said that at a more convenient season. How many things has God asked you to do this week? And almost you did it. You almost called somebody and told them that the Lord loved them. You almost stopped and helped somebody on the side of the road and told them that Jesus died for their sin. Almost, praise God, you did it. How many things this week could you look back in your life? And how many things could I look back in my life? And almost I did it. Let's go back to Mary. Praise God, I'm glad it wasn't almost. When the Holy Ghost came down and, and praise God, she was conceived with son. And look at the things that happened if she had not have allowed that into her body. Look at the things that would not have happened. Praise God, this church would not have been here. We wouldn't have came together today. If almost I'd have said, God, I ain't going to that church. That's 35 minutes away from my house. I don't want to drive that far. But almost, thank God, I said, Lord, I'll go. How many today said, that church is too far for me to drive? I don't like listening to that preacher. Almost I went to church, but I don't know where to go. God tell you where to go, friend, if you just ask him. How many almost do you have in your life this week? How many almost do I have in my life this week where God could have really used me? God could have really put me out there and helped somebody, but I said, no, Lord. Almost I thought about it. Almost, almost he came to Peter. Oh, Lord, where would this Bible be if it was just almost and not all together? Almost he called his disciples. If John would have said, behold the Lamb of God that almost taketh away your sin. Bless the Lord. That almost takes away your sin. I'm glad there's one that did take it away and he'll take yours away today. Almost. Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin. Would you like him to take your sin away today? You said, I ain't got no sin. Well, bless your heart too. How about praying for somebody else and not almost taking time throughout the week to pray for somebody else? How many things have we fostered and failed on? How many things have I fostered and failed on? Because I just didn't have time. I just didn't have time for the Lord to do that. And almost, Lord, almost I went. And told that man that's been on my heart, I'd like for him to come pray. Almost, Lord, I, I've seen them come and, and tears run down their eyes. And almost they came and prayed. But they start to weigh out the things of this world. You know what I like to do when I come to church? I like to forget about everything in this world and keep my mind on Jesus. This world ain't going to help you, friend. The help of this world is vanity, what the Bible tells me. But the help of Jesus will last forever, friend. And almost, oh, Lord. I'm glad that Mary didn't almost get those devils cast out of her. Ain't you glad that she didn't almost get them cast out? But altogether, everything that was in her, I believe she loved him, friend, to whom he forgave most, to whom loved most, not almost, not just almost. How many things in your life, friend? How many things have you failed God this week and I failed him because I decided almost, well, I just don't want to do that. So many things that I read in this Bible from the beginning to the end, friend. How would it be if God would have almost came to Adam and said, Adam, where art thou? If he had just placed God, slapped them all out. 
Where would we be today if God hadn't just came to Noah, but almost he would have saved Noah and his family. Just almost he would have done that. But altogether, friend, he loves us today so much that he read to us, he sent his only begotten son to die for me, not almost. I'm glad that scripture's in there, ain't you? I believe every sinner, man, praise God, that's under the age, or over the age of 30, he knows that scripture. He's seen that scripture everywhere. For God so loved the world, he almost sent his son. He thought about it for a minute, but he said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to give my son up. Almost I'll send my son to die for that old wretched sinner boy down there at Memorial Chapel. Almost. God said, I'm thinking about it. What do you think? Almost I might send my son. Almost I might let you beat him. Oh, praise the Lord. Almost I might let you put the crown of thorns on his head. Almost I may let you smite him. Almost. Almost. But I don't know. But he said, no, I sent him to die. Jesus said, for this end was I born. Almost, praise God, he went to that cross. No, altogether, he went to that cross for your sins and my sins. Bless the Lord. Not almost. Oh, Lord, (laughs) bless his holy name. When he went to that garden, if he would have prayed, Father, not my will, but almost I'd like to do yours, but I don't know yet. No, he said, nevertheless. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Not almost, but altogether, I walk all the way up Calvary's hill for your sins and my sins. Oh, Lord. (laughs) Not almost do I have a Savior, but altogether, I got one that died for me when I was yet in my sins. Christ didn't almost die for me. That scripture wouldn't even mean the same, would it? When you were yet in your sins, Donnie, Jesus almost died for you. Almost he gave you a way out. Almost you got a way out. Bless God, I'm telling you all together, you've got a way out of your sins today, and his name's called Jesus. Bless the Lord. Almost. Festus, Felix, almost, Paul, you persuaded me. How many of us today have almost been persuaded to be a Christian? You've almost been persuaded to say, Lord, oh, I want to be saved. Lord, I'd like to be saved. I'm glad on September the 26th, 2001, I didn't say almost, Lord, I want to give you my life. I said, Lord, you can have it. All together, Lord, not almost. What would have happened if you'd have prayed all night and he almost saved you? You'd probably be dead in hell right now. If almost he saved you that night. There's a lot of us, friend. If almost he saved you, you'd be in hell today, right now burning. Oh, Lord, but not almost. But he came. Oh, God. If they would have came and asked, do you want Barabbas or do you want Jesus? Do you want Barabbas or do you want Jesus? And almost they put Barabbas on that cross. I'd still be in my sins today. I'd still be lost today unless Barabbas got to go free. I am that Barabbas, friend. I'm the one that was guilty of that. And you're the one that was guilty of that. But Jesus said, I'll go. I'll go and pay their sin debt. What would it be if God would have said, I'm going to send something that will pay half. Almost pay your whole sin debt. I've got a bill. But I've got a payment. And I'll almost pay your sin debt. I'm going to pay the first half of it. You'll be responsible for the second half. We'd be in trouble today, friend. But praise God, he paid the whole thing. Not in part, but the whole today. Bless his name. The whole thing was paid. Not almost, but altogether, every bit of it. A zero balance. How many would like to have a zero balance today? I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care if you've been saved for 100 years. You still like to have a zero balance. They say weight and sin that so easily besets us. I don't want to almost get rid of that weight. I don't want to almost get rid of that sin. But altogether, God, help me to lay it down at your cross today. Bless his name. Almost. (laughs) Jesus, going up that hill. Going up that hill. Almost. All the sin of the world was laid upon him. But if God would have said, I'm going to lay yours on him but not yours. I'm going to lay yours on him but not yours. Almost yours but not yours. Almost yours. God didn't pick and choose, friend. He came for the whole world. Hey, that all, that none should be lost in the whole world. What if he said almost the whole world? That would have changed everything. This Bible wouldn't even be the Bible, friend. If he'd have said almost. But he said all together. To whomsoever will. I'll tell you what. I'm a whosoever today. And that's why I can be free. Oh, Lord. I'm a whosoever. Are you a whosoever today? How'd you come in? I come in because I was spotted up. I come in because I was, praise God, bound down with sin and chains. I wasn't almost lost. Bless his holy name. There's a lot of people 
that sit in the church house, and I'm sure I did at one point in time, they'll sit and they'll say, well, I don't know if I'm saved or not. I'm almost saved. That's good enough, ain't it? I'm almost lost. That's good enough. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, friend. I'd like to know if you, praise God, you need to know if you're lost or you're saved today, you need to tell the Lord, I'm almost lost. I'm almost saved. I'd hate to be in that state. I'd hate to have my mind so twisted up not to know that I know. I'm telling you something. I know it's going to take Jesus for me to make it all the way. There was a dear saint told me, and I've said it here before, it'll take the same thing, to praise God, to get you there as it will to keep you here. It'll take the same blood to take you there as it will to keep you here. And not almost, but altogether, he can keep you here. He can, can he not keep you here, friend? If he would have said, I'm going to save you, God sent his only begotten son to save you, but then you're on your own. I'm going to save you, then you're on your own. That's like picking up a puppy on the road and taking him home and feeding him and letting him get a fat stomach and then taking him out and throwing him off a bridge. God didn't do that. Praise God, he wrapped his arms around you and sent his son to love on you and to die for you. Not almost. I almost kept that puppy. I almost kept that man. I almost kept, no, no. He'll keep you, friend. If you got confidence in him, he'll keep you. And well, if daddy gets saved, I get saved. No, how about you first? <laughs> how about you first? Well, if mama will get saved, I'll get saved. What about you first, friend? I'd like to be the first one in my family. I'd like to be the first one to say, not almost, but all together, God, would you save me? I believe you'll save you today, friend. Praise God, I didn't come up with this. In the middle of the night, he'd give me this. Almost, almost I wanted to be saved. Are you thinking about it today? I know there's been some of you here. I don't know where you're sitting at. There's been some of you here who's been thinking about it. There's been some of you. Oh, Lord, you're getting close, ain't you? You're getting close, ain't you? You're almost thinking about asking the Lord to save you. Let me tell you something today, friend. If you can feel that on your heart, he won't almost save you. He'll save you to the uttermost. Bless the Lord. Hey, you say, how you know it? Because he saved me. How you know it? You, praise God, you think you're better than me? No, no. I'm the least of anybody here today, and I've got confidence on the blood of the Lamb. If He saved me, He'll save you today. Glory. Can anybody say that? Can anybody say if He saved you, He can say, hey, you think He can save anybody? You think He can save anybody? I believe He can save everybody today, friend. If we can just say, Lord, not almost, but all together. I don't want to almost be saved. You know, there's a crowd that wants to almost be saved. Help me, Lord. There's a crowd that wants to almost be saved. They want to go out and do the world all week, and they want to come to church and play the part. God don't like that, friend. It stinks in his nostrils. He said either all together or depart from me. How many today? Help me, Lord. How many today are in the devil's hell? And almost, they almost got saved. They was at some powerful meetings. They felt the Spirit of God when somebody witnessed to them. And almost they got saved. Almost they said, God, forgive me. But they turned away from it and walked away. It's like that rich young ruler I talked about last night. That rich young ruler, <laughs> he said, what must I do? Maybe you're thinking, what must I do? I'll tell you exactly what you must do. You must get in your mind, not almost, but all together. If that rich young ruler, instead he went away and wept bitterly because God said, he said, I got kept all the commandments. He said, I've done all these. I've done the law. I've kept the law side of it. But there's still something missing. Is there somebody here today and something's missing in your heart? Glory to the Lamb. Is there something missing in your heart today? I can't examine your heart. It ain't my job to examine your heart. But I want to tell you something. God gave me this message last night for somebody to be saved today. Oh, that rich young ruler. Almost. So close. So close. As Judas came, as Judas came and came to Jesus and kissed him on the, on the cheek, kissed him and said, this is the one. Almost Judas could have turned away. Almost at the last time. You say, well, it had to be done. I know, but God's a big God. He can do things a lot of different ways and still get the same job done. Almost. He walked with them. Maybe you've been walking with us for a couple of weeks. Maybe you've been walking with us for a couple of months. And almost you're thinking about it. I say all together today, friend. How about giving your heart to the Lord? Hey, is that the best thing you ever done, Brother Mike? Is that the best thing you ever done? I tell you the best thing I ever done. I took off the old coat and put on the new, bless the Lord. <laughs> Not almost. There was times I thought about it. As Brother Wayne already said it. Thinking, well, I've got some, some oats I'd like to sow. I'm still a young man. And I've told you this before, but he brought it up, so it brought it back to my mind. Thinking, well, I'm still a young man. I, I look around. Everybody here is older than me. and I think I'll just wait. Well, look at them. I mean, they're older and, and I, they got to experience things I didn't. Let me tell you something, friend. If you wait too long, it may find yourself in a devil's hell. You say, I'm tired of hearing that. Praise God, I'm telling you, hell's real. It's just as real as heaven. 
just as real as heaven. Almost. Almost been walking together. How many of them walked with Jesus for all that time? And almost, as I began to mention last night, they, they one by one walked away and they got down to the 12. They'd been walking with him for a while. Now, I don't know if they's walking with him just for the bread, the fishes, and the loaves. or I'm not really sure. I hadn't studied that out. But almost some of them could have stayed. Almost some of them could have stayed, Brother Wayne. And I believe he started off with a big multitude. And one by one, they begin to walk away from him. One by one, they begin to turn. How many is going to turn away from him today? How many is going to turn away from him today? Almost. You're right there at the door. You're right there at the door. Wouldn't you like to come in? I'd hate to go to the door of somebody's house knowing they're on the inside. And I look at the door and I almost touch the handle. I almost touched the handle, but I don't go inside. You know, we've seen that picture before. And, and there again, I, I remember having this picture in my home. Not really, didn't really come from a Christian home, but we still had pictures of Jesus in the house. And that's the reason why I like this one so much. You think you want to take it down? We're going to have some problems. I had one like that in my house. But I'm telling you, I can remember looking at that picture as a lost man. And I thought, why ain't there no handle on that side? Oh, Lord, you've seen this before. Why ain't there no handle on Jesus' side? Because he's waiting for you. If it's up to him, he'd open the door and praise God to usher you in. But he's waiting for you, friend, to come on in. It's up to you. Almost you can open that door today. Almost. You say, is that how it is? I don't know, but that picture always meant so much to me as a lost man. Knowing that it was on my side. On my side. We don't see very many doors like that now. Most of them got a handle on both sides. But God's waiting for you today, friend. And don't almost, but all together. As she becomes, comes to the music, if you will. Oh, Lord. Not almost, but all together. How many of you have almost got saved? Last three or four services. You've almost come and prayed. You've wanted to, and you've almost. You've been right there at the door. Oh, you're just like them kings. Almost you persuaded me to be a Christian. Almost you persuaded me to follow after Jesus. I'm telling you, friend, if you come today and you get saved, you're not following me. Please don't follow me. Please don't follow anybody in this building. You follow the one, praise God, that died for you. I told you a long time ago, I'm not following the followers. I'm following the leader today, and his name is Jesus. Everybody stand, if you will. She begins to play. Church, pray. Church, pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Oh, Lord. How many times? How many times has he ushered you this week? To read that good old book. And almost you went and picked it up. And went to your prayer closet. But you was just so busy. How many times has he pecked on your heart. To turn that form of entertainment off. Whatever it is. And, and to go and meet with him. To pray he wanted to give you something. And almost you picked up the remote. And turned it off. Almost you turned that radio off. Almost you set your phone down. Almost you set the paper down. But not all together. There's too many things going on in your life to do that. God's going to give you a chance today, friend. You say, who are you preaching to? I'm preaching to me. Who are you preaching to? I'm preaching to me. I mean, not almost. But there's something in your life that you know God would help you with. You've got confidence as Nicodemus came. And Brother Wayne laid the foundation so beautiful. As Nicodemus came and he knew Jesus was special. Is anybody here today, you know Jesus is special. He'll receive you, friend. Don't walk away one more time almost saved. If you're here today and you're backslidden, you're cold and indifferent on the Lord, don't walk away almost getting warm. Don't walk away almost receiving a closer walk. We've talked about relationships before. I've asked you before, is it a serious relationship? But you know we've all dealt with those things before when you, you start off real slow and you just start talking just a little bit once in a while and you know, you may call once every couple of days and maybe once a week. And before you know it, you start having a desire in your heart to want to call them every day. You want to hear their voice every day. And then you get to where you don't just want to hear it every day, but you want to hear it more times than once in a day. That's the way it is with Jesus. That's the way it is with Jesus. You don't have to leave him at church, friend. I'm glad I don't have to leave him at church. But I can talk to him all day. I can lay down with him at night. I can wake up with him in the morning. Oh, what a relationship this is. But there's been many times in my life I could have almost had that. I could have almost had that, but God's had to help me. And he wants to help you today, friend. I can't preach you to the altar. I can't preach you to get saved. It's got to be that, that dealing in your heart. As Brother Wayne talked about it, you can't just get saved when you want to. 
It's when God is dealing with your heart. And you can feel that heart. And you know that God is beckoning you. He's beckoning many today. But He's beckoning you today, friend, to not almost. I'd hate to hear your testimony in hell. Almost. Almost, Donnie, you persuaded me to be a Christian. Almost, Donnie, you persuaded me out of my lukewarm state. Almost, Donnie, you persuaded me to help my brother. Almost. That's a terrible word. That's a terrible word. Would anybody like to come pray today? Please, would you come pray? You've been walking with us for a couple weeks. You've been walking with us for a couple weeks. How about coming and praying today? The Lord loves you, friend. He don't almost love you. He proved His love for you as He went up that hill. He didn't almost walk that path, but He walked it, friend. He didn't almost put His hands on that cross for them to nail Him. He didn't almost put His feet on that cross for them to nail Him. But altogether, He laid Himself down like a sheep led to slaughter. He opened not His mouth. Would you come today, friend? Would you come today, my friend? God wants you. God wants to receive you today. Please, friend. God wants you. Not almost, but all together. Anybody like to raise their hand and say, Preacher, I don't want it to be almost. I just don't know what to do. I don't want to say almost anymore. I'm tired of saying almost. I want to leave here knowing that God has saved me. And if I get killed on the way out of here, I want you to know that I will be in heaven because God has saved my soul. We'd like to know your testimony, friend. We'd like to know. I don't know anybody's heart here. Uh, there's a lot of people that, praise God, they, they're sheep, or, or wolves in sheep clothing, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't look at your heart that close. That's between you and the Lord. Or would anybody like to say all together? That's the opposite of almost. Anybody like to raise their hand and say all together? All together, Lord, not almost. But I pray that you'd save me. Yes. Anybody else like to raise their hand? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody else? While the Spirit is moving, we thank God for not almost sending His Son. Not almost. Brother June, He sent Him to you. He didn't almost send Him to your house. He didn't almost send him to church this morning, but I promise you, he sent him for us. He sent him for whosoever will. Everybody here, before we pray, anybody like to come pray? Anybody raise their hands like to come pray? If there's somebody around you, you just ask them to move. I believe they'll move. Go ahead, sis, you pray. Anybody else like to come pray? Anybody else like to come pray today? Praise the Lord. Anybody else like to come pray today? Praise the Lord. Anybody else like to come pray today? Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Church, come pray. Come pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, touch my brother. Touch my brother, Jesus. Touch me, Jesus. Oh, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, 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 Lord. Thank you, Lord. Touch him today, Jesus. I believe in my heart, God, you'll save him. I believe it. I believe in my heart. Oh, God, I believe it. I believe it. 
you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, touch me. Touch my brother. Oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. I know you will. I know you will. Not almost, but all together. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. 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 Touch him, God. God, I pray that you give him exactly what he needs. Give him exactly what he needs.